I showed everyone the video of when you were uh, confronting uh, the Senate and Joe Biden. This is when Joe Biden was still a, a senator. I'm sure you remember this. And I'm just curious, at, at that point in time when you were talk, talking about like the, the weapons in um, Iraq, did you have any idea that this guy would go on to become president of the United States, like for reals? Understand that that um, meeting or event took place, I think, on September third, nineteen ninety eight. September third or September fourth. Um, I had resigned in the middle of August of nineteen ninety eight. Prior to that, my job was either weapons inspector, which I had done for seven years, or marine intelligence officer, which I did for <clears throat> you know seven years prior to that, um, or six years prior to that. I, I didn't interact with Congress. I, I didn't do this. I, I and I was, you know, my my level of my political commitment to that time was Ronald Reagan. <laughs> that was it. I'm a, I was a Reagan Republican. I didn't look at domestic issues. I looked at the enemy. I I tried to do the job I was given. I I wasn't somebody out there fighting the good fight for social justice causes and all this kind of stuff. I didn't understand what I was getting involved in. To give you an example. They, they sent me a request. They said, we want you to come and testify. Now, the original request would have me testify together with Madeleine Albright, the Secretary of State, and I think Cohen was the Secretary of Defense at the time. And I'm sitting there going, guys, I was a major in the Marine Corps. Now, I know I was a weapons inspector and all this stuff, but that's a Secretary of State and a Secretary of Defense. You want me to come and do this? They said, yeah, because you... I said, I know who they are. I've worked with them. Uh, I, and I'm intimately familiar with the policies and I know they're lying through their teeth. <clears throat> so you want me to come to the Senate with them on the stage and call them liars and prove it? I said, yes. I said, okay, sign me up, baby. But I didn't, I thought it was because they wanted the truth. No, they didn't want the truth. It was politics. These were the Republicans. Trent Lott, the, 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 the Senate majority leader, wanted to embarrass the Clinton administration. That was all it was about. Joe Biden was a big Senate uh, Democrat. Joe Biden didn't want this hearing to take place. Joe Biden said, we're shutting this hearing down, which they did uh, through a procedural thing. He said, first of all, he said, Albright and Cohen aren't going to appear on stage with Ritter. They have other things to do, so we don't need to hold this hearing. And Trent Lott said, no, nah, we're going to have Ritter come up anyways. And he said, well, no, then we're going to not allow this through parliament because there's certain things that have to be done. And Trent Lott, what I found out in the history, the first time in the history of the, um, of the, of the U S Senate, and I didn't know this at the time, he suspended the Senate and then he brought it back into order, thereby resetting some sort of parliamentary clock. And then, you know, so I drive up and I'm like, do, 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 do. I'm going to testify for the U S Senate. You know, oh, it's a historical event. I'm going to testify for a joint committee of the foreign relations and the armed service. It's never happened before in history. Doi, 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 doi. I'm just moving on thinking, great. I'm, I mean, I'm not doing that, but I'm like, I'm professionally focused. Okay, I'm going to answer the questions. I'm ready. But I wasn't thinking about the political aspects. I was just going to testify before a joint hearing of the, of the Senate. They say, Scott, Trent Lott wants to see you. I'm like, okay. So I go up. Trent Lott, we get the photograph taken, me and Trent Lott. Hey, I got it, signed photograph. Scott, you're a great American. Photograph, and then Trent says, I'm going to walk you into the Senate. And I'm thinking, wow, Senate Majority Leader's going to walk me into the Senate. He was walking me into the Senate to send a signal to the Democrats that he's in control. And Biden's sitting there watching this thing going, you son of a bitch. He was just seething about it. So I come up, and I'm shaking. Trent Lott moves around, and I shake all the Republican hands. And I'm like, what about the Democrats? No, I don't get to shake any Democrat hands. I'm like, well, that's sort of unfair, but I'm, Trent Lott leaves and I sit down and it begins. Biden was so furious at me because he thought that I was working with Trent Lott, that I was a Republican. He didn't understand that I wasn't there to be politicized. I was there to tell the truth. Biden, the last thing Biden wanted was the truth to be told. He didn't want me there. He tried to stop me from being there. And then he saw he perceived me as being politicized. And so he attacked me. To be honest, prior to him speaking, I didn't know who the hell Joe Biden was. I just knew he was a senator from Delaware. I knew that he was a senator from Delaware. I had zero interaction with the guy. 
as soon as he opened his mouth in speaking, I despised the man and everything he stood for. And I've hated him ever since. We met and he he blew it. I mean, people don't realize how, how much pushback there was against Joe Biden that day. Um, even the Washington Post wrote an op-ed that said he was wrong for that. He had to apologize. He wrote up an op-ed in the Washington Post apologizing. And then he invited me back to his office. And so I, uh, a couple of weeks later, I went back and met with him one-on-one -on -one in his office. And we had a meeting for like 40, 45 minutes, which if you're a U.S. Senator, it's a long time. We had a very detailed conversation. He wrote me a letter afterwards thanking me for coming in, talking in. And at the bottom, he said, you know, this issue hasn't gone away if you – if you ever can be of service or if I need you or something like that, you know, don't be afraid to call me and all that stuff. So I had that letter and now 20 or 2002, we're getting ready to go to war. <coughs> and Biden is the chairman of the Senate foreign relations committee. It's a joint chair at the time. He, I think he chaired it with uh, Senator Luger from uh, Indiana. And I'm sitting there saying, you guys got to have a hearing. You got to have a hearing about Iraq, about weapons of mass destruction. And I had gone around all the Senate knocking on doors saying, you got to have hearings. And I remember I, would, I wanted to get Chuck Hagel, a Republican from, Denver, from Nebraska, and uh, John Kerry from Massachusetts together because they were both military guys, Vietnam War guys, understand the consequences of war. And I wanted to get them together. So I went and met with Hagel. And he said, man, I can't get ahead of my – because this is an election. You know, No, no, no. This, that was an earlier meeting. This one, he said, I can't, I can't do this by myself. I need somebody with me. I called up Kerry. I said, Hagel needs an ally for this. And Kerry said, put it in writing. Put your arguments in writing. So I wrote an article for Arms Control Today, the preeminent arms control journal, um, and they published it, uh, the, the case for the qualitative disarmament of Iraq, explaining exactly how Iraq was disarmed. By the way, that article I published in uh, June of 2000, and, um, and the CIA, when they published their assessment afterwards, it said they were all wrong. This is exactly the article I wrote. My arguments were always technically sound correct. But I did that. They ignored me. Kerry wouldn't talk to me. Hagel wouldn't talk to me. Biden ignored me. Biden sent his chief of staff to meet with me. He called me a traitor to my face. He said, You're a you've committed treason writing this article. And we were alone in a room. And I said, if you call me that one more time, only one person's walking out of this room. And I know who it's going to be. It ain't going to be you. Don't you ever question my patriotism. And he apologized. But he was Joe Biden's man. He attacked me. And then he said, ultimately, that Biden's not going to go for this. I reminded Biden of the letter he wrote me. He wouldn't go for it. Joe Biden is a cowardly piece of manure. Um, I knew that in 2000. I, I knew that in 1999. I knew that in 2000. I knew that in 2002. He's a liar. He was briefed in detail. I briefed him in person, and I briefed his chief of staff. He knew all the facts that turned out to be 100% correct. Biden was never interested in the truth. He was always interested in promoting this war, this fantasy war that he, he, he had out there. And at that point in time, I, I realized that this guy was doing it because he wanted to be president of the United States. And um, that's when I realized that, you know, that's what he wanted to do. I never thought the American people would elect this man, especially after the Iraq war fiasco, where it was clear that he was a warmonger, a liar, who promoted the lies, etc. Why in God's name people voted for him in the, in 2020? I don't. I know why. Donald Trump. Um, but you got what you paid for, ladies and gentlemen. This is the worst human being possible. When his brain is working, and now his brain's not working, which actually allows me to have a little bit of sympathy for him because I can't hate somebody who has dementia. I can't hate somebody with Alzheimer's, um, and he's a sick man. But when he was healthy, I despised him. And I, I knew he wanted to be president, and there was just no way I thought the American people would would fall for this. I was shocked when Barack Obama appointed, you know, brought him in as the vice president. I thought that that was, you know, but it was a brilliant move on Obama's part because Biden. What I also found out is he is the establishment. He is the personification of the establishment, and the establishment is very powerful. The establishment's more powerful than the American people, and uh, it's a sad state of affairs. I. I didn't know who he was. The short answer to your question is when, when, he, when he first talked to me like that, I didn't know. He, I, he was just a mean guy up there, you know, saying really stupid things. But once I got to know the guy, I learned to despise him.